Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Well, again, I just want to welcome you, you know, to our Christmas Eve service. We're so excited, um, again, that we as a family, we as a church, we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We get to celebrate, the, again, the hope of the world, the Prince of Peace, right, the mighty God, everlasting Father. Like, we get to celebrate Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I think some of us, at least for me, like, I've been in the church, I've been in church my whole life, and I think sometimes around Christmas time, I kind of take for granted what this truly means, you know, that we live on this side of Jesus's birth. You imagine if we read through the scriptures, you read through the Old Testament, all of these things are really pointing to Jesus and people waiting for him, waiting for the Messiah, waiting for Jesus to come to this earth. And we get hit with this reality that hope is here. Hope is here on this earth and we need to put our hope in the right things. And I find it, I find it, I find oftentimes, maybe you do too, that Christmas can be such a peculiar time of year. Because it, it, what happens is we stand face to face with two different realities. When we, look, when we look at 2022, I think a lot of us, what do we see? A lot of us, we see uh, expectations that weren't met. We look back at this past year and we see all the things that we des- desired or that we dreamed for that we went into January with our, you know, with our, with our New Year's resolutions, right? To go to the gym more or whatever it is. We're faced with that reality, sometimes filled with despair and sometimes some of us filled with success, filled with blessings, filled with miracles. So we're facing the past as well as we enter into this moment where it's an encounter with hope. And what happens is we have this, 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 this deep sense of hope while at the same time some of us are experiencing a deep sense of despair at the exact same time. They're coexisting around Christmas time where we celebrate the beauty of who Jesus is. And then sometimes we look at our circumstance and we think, how, how come my circumstance doesn't meet up with the hope that Jesus brought? And I can't be the only one who sometimes has these, th- these thoughts that go through my mind. But then what happens is we have these two realities and we come together Christmas Eve. And what what do we do? We bring all our success. We bring all our failure. We bring all our missed expectations. We bring all our disappointments. We bring all our fear. And we lay it down at Jesus' feet. Then we say, okay, Jesus, I still have hope in you. I still have my hope in you. Even though there's so many things that have been so hard. My hope and my eyes are still fixed on you. We come together as a family. uh, We come together as brothers and sisters. And we say, yes, for some of us, 2022 is amazing. For some of us, it was hard. But we come together to worship the king, no matter what has gone through, to celebrate hope together. Because I, I know this, and I think you know this, hope is what we all desperately need. Without hope, we have nothing. We have nothing to look forward to. We have nothing to expect because hope is gone. And we need hope so desperately. Hope is needed as we go forward. And there's a few questions that I think we ponder around Christmas time. And at least I ponder is where is my hope right now? Where is my hope? Where was my hope this year? How many times did I lose focus on the real hope for hope that was so temporal that came and it may have lasted an hour or a week or a month or a year, but it faded. And then we still get to this place of despair. I want to encourage you, let's put our hope in Jesus this Christmas. You know, is your hope, sometimes we find our hope in what's under the tree. You know, sometimes we find our hope in what our bank account looks like. Some of us, we get our hope when we finally get our Christmas bonus right? Hopefully you got your Christmas bonus, right? Some of us, we, we put our hope in the vacation that we have planned this year, 
But the thing is, all of these things only last for a short time. How many of y'all know your bonus can disappear pretty quickly, right? In a moment. But Jesus never fades. The hope that we put in Jesus is something that will last forever. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. He was the same in 2022 that he will be in 2023 if we put our hope and fixate our eyes on him that no matter what, we find our hope in him. That's where our hope has to be. Our hope has to be in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. So the question is, what does hope do? What happens when we put our hope in Jesus? What actually takes place? And I wanna give us three things tonight that I think will help us when it comes to hope and actually living out hope in our life and what it does. Number one is that when we put our hope in Jesus, it strengthens us. Hope strengthens us. Hope is something that, that even if we feel like we can't take one more step, our eyes are on the future knowing that we are the child of a king. We, it strengthen us, strengthens us to a point of, yes, we're tired. Yes, we're exhausted. Yes, we're weary. But the promise is, is that if we go to him with our burdens, he will give us rest. He will give us the rest that you desperately need. Sometimes despair is just filling our minds. Despair sometimes just fills our minds and we don't feel like 2023 could be any better than 2022 because our hope is dwindling and our strength is so low. You know, some of us, we're tired. Some of us, we've been trying to go on our own strength day after day, moment after moment. And where does it leave you? It leaves you broken and tired. In Psalm 23, verse one to three, it says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He will provide for you. He lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. And this part right here, verse three, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. You know what Jesus loves to do? He loves to take beaten and broken people and give them hope and give them rest. And I look at my life and I think a lot of us, those of us who are followers of Jesus, we can take a look back at before we found Jesus and see how broken and beaten we really were. I think sometimes I like to reflect and look back on when my hope was in popularity. I take moments where I look back and think where my hope was in was in finance. And I look back and I think, man, how wrong was I? And then when I found Jesus, and I'll tell you, I, we, we all go through horrible things, things that are terrible. And I have people who don't believe in Jesus that say, how do you make it through those moments? Have you ever had that question? How do you make it through? Like if I was in your shoes, I'd probably just run away. You know what I'm talking about? I say, because my hope is not on my circumstance. My hope is not in my government. My hope is not in my finances. It's not in my job. It's not in my education. My hope is in Jesus. That's how I can make it through. Because he is the one who gives us strength to overcome. He gives you the courage that you need to overcome, to go forward. That's what hope does in our lives. It keeps our eyes on the future and it allows Jesus to come and carry us even if we can't keep walking. He will come and be there for you. And the second thing that hope does is it unifies. Hope unifies. And I don't know if anyone is a Star Wars fan. Maybe you're not, and that's totally fine. But there's this, like, there's this iconic line in, in, in Star Wars uh, in, in episode four. And it's this line, it says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. You know that line? It's like iconic. <laughs> Perfect. I was like, oh yeah, I know that one. <laughs> it's like, sweet. And this hope that we're talking about in this moment is, is hope that they can finally find freedom from the empire that's come and they're like taking over, trying to take over the whole galaxy. And Princess Leia, she goes to, says, Obi-Wan, I need your help. You're my only hope. And it's interesting is that this hope unified a resistance to actually take back the power. 
And, and this is such a small thing of hope, right? Like this is such a menial, small thing that's so temporal. And we know if you know Star Wars, it's very temporal, okay? But they finally find hope and it unified them together. And they're unified around something so small, but we unify ourselves in the hope that Jesus will rescue us. Jesus will save us. He'll pursue us. He'll take care of you. He'll provide for you. He'll heal you. We're unified under the authority of Jesus. That's what hope will do. Because I think for a lot of us, if I wasn't a believer, if we weren't believers, we didn't follow Jesus, I would be in so much turmoil right now about what's going on in our world. I'd be struggling. But the beauty of the hope that we have is that we know we win. Right? Like, we know the end of the story. So the hope that we have, we we don't just hope and say, okay, I hope it works out. It's like, I hope, but I know that we're going to win. And in 1 John 4, 4, it says this, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over these people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Greater is he that's in you. When we give our lives to Jesus, that hope that came that that day when Jesus was born, that hope that came lives inside of us. We're carriers of it to a hopeless world. You are hope. You are hope to a hopeless, broken, beating world who needs Jesus. Let's be the hope that they need as well. This Christmas, let us be carriers of hope. Greater is he that is in you. That is what we are united under. The hope we have is guaranteed. We know the outcome. We know the, what's going to happen. We know it. We know the victory. We know the end of the story. But I think a lot of us, we're not living that way. We have the hope. We've seen it. We know Jesus is here. We know that we're not actually living as if that hope is real. We're not living our lives as if the hope that Jesus brings is real. I, and I, I, like, I know this for a lot of us, there's a lot of fear that comes, right? So many, it's so interesting. You read through the Christmas story, how many times is the, 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 the angels say, do not be afraid, right? Over and over and over and over. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Why? Because hope is coming. Do not be afraid. And so I think for all of us, what was said to Mary, what was said to Joseph, what was said to the angels, do not be afraid, I think is an echo of also what's being said today. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid when it seems like everything around you might be falling apart. Do not be afraid when you don't actually see what you were expecting. Do not be afraid because greater is he he is the greatest he brings peace he unifies us as believers to go forward and be carriers of hope so number one you know is hope uh, hope strengthens number two hope unifies and this is the last one number three is that hope leads to peace. Hope leads to peace. And I think that every time we have hope, peace comes. Every time we have something to have hope in, we can have peace knowing that we got to just keep going one more day, one more moment, one more day. And I heard this story with this man's father, alcoholic, and he, he he was like, okay, I'm going to try and get sober. So he, and he'd done this over and over and over and over and over again. And finally, one day his dad said, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm going to be sober. And his son went to him and said, dad, how do you know? Like, are you going to, are you actually done? And he said, to be honest, son, I, I don't fully know. But I just got to go one more day. I just got to go one more day. I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, 
You can go one more day. You can make it through one more day. Hope has the power to strengthen you and unify you, but it also has the power to bring you peace. Let his hope come to you today. And this is what Billy Graham once said when it came to hope in Jesus. He said, for the believer, there is hope beyond the grave because Jesus Christ has opened the door to heaven for us by his death and resurrection. There is hope beyond the grave. The hope that we have is not just earthly. It's not just that we have hope that we're gonna get a better job, that we're gonna pay our bills, that we're gonna be able to buy our house. It's not hope that we're gonna one day find our future spouse. It, the, the hope is beyond that. We have to know that our hope is so eternal that it goes upward That is where our hope fully and truly is. There's so much peace in knowing that we have hope beyond the grave. Everything that happens on this earth is so temporal, right? It can also change in a moment. But our hope is beyond our lives here on this earth. And we can walk in the peace that passes all understanding. And I'm gonna read this, it's Philippians 4, 6. And this, you might be like, wow, this is my story. But it says this, don't worry about anything. How many of y'all going into Christmas and you're worrying about everything? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You know, I think for us, instead, again, this is what we do. We worry about ev- everything and we pray about nothing. Right? I get like, like we do this, we, we, we worry about everything and we don't pray about anything. No, it says, no, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. What if you made that shift in your life? Where worry was something that when worry comes, yeah, it's gonna come. There's worries that come. But what do you do first? Do you feed into worry or do you pray about everything? And then it goes on and says, tell God what you need. And thank him for all he's done. It's not hard. It's not rocket science, right? No prayer. It's like, tell God what you need and thank him for everything he's already done. It's not complicated. This Christmas, let's give him our worries. Let's give him it all and let's be grateful for what we already have. And then in verse seven says this, then you will experience God's peace, right? This is a formula, okay? It's like, this is like a math equation. So how do we get peace? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. And it's not just a small amount of peace. Then it says, which exceeds anything we can understand. Some of us in this room, we think we're pretty smart. Maybe you have like, maybe you're a doctor, right? Maybe you got your PhD. Maybe you have like tons of education. You're smart. But the peace God has for you, you can't even comprehend it. You can't even understand it, the peace that Jesus will bring when you stop worrying about everything and you start praying about everything. And then it says, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. When we give Jesus everything, this puts our trust and our hope in him. And when our hope is in him, what do we do? We receive peace. So this Christmas, let the hope of Jesus lead you to peace. It's not about what you have. It's not about what you get. It's not about the meal you eat. It's not even about time with your family. Again, all these things are great. Time with your family, food is good. Like, I love food, I like to eat. But these can just give you glimpses of hope. But when the dust settles, when the wrapping paper is thrown away, when the leftovers are finally gone, when your your family finally heads back home, 
What are you left with? What are you left with when you're sitting maybe alone at your table after everything's done? And the hope that you had, yes, Christmas is going to be amazing, but now what? Put your hope in Jesus. And this is what Isaiah prophesied. It's very calm, and maybe you've heard this, and it was in the video we just heard, but it says this, Isaiah 9, 6. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. So fascinating about this is Isaiah said this about 700 years before Jesus was born. 700 years. You know what that means? They saw this and they never actually got to see Jesus. They all died. Right? Like they they died. They never actually got to experience this on earth. They never got to see it. We get to see it. We have the ability to experience this peace all they had was hope all they had was hope they didn't have the birth story in Luke chapter 2 right they didn't have the genealogy in Matthew they didn't have it all you know what they needed was a wonderful counsel what they needed was a mighty God what they needed was an everlasting father and a prince of peace but they never got the fullness of it on earth They never got to fully taste and see that the Lord is good like we get to. I want to tell you something. Hope is here today. We get to experience His hope. We get to experience His peace. Because it's not just a pipe dream. It's not just a prophecy. It's not just an idea. It's not just a concept. It's not just a religion. It's not just a book. Hope is a person. And this person's name is Jesus. He is your wonderful counselor. He is your mighty God. He is your everlasting father. He is your prince of peace. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with you through it all. Let the hope of Jesus guide you and protect you. Learn to trust him because hope is here. Do you see it? Do you taste it? Hope is here. Don't let the hope of Jesus pass by you without grabbing onto it and not letting go. Don't let go. This Christmas, take time to reflect and to celebrate this hope. Take some time with your family and even share what you're hoping for. What are you hoping God's going to do? What are you expecting God to do? And I just want to leave you with one thought tonight. And then we're going to sing one last song. But last thought is this. Jesus is the hope that you have been waiting for. For some of us, it's time to grab hold of it for the first time. For others of us, it's time to grab hold of it for the one millionth time, right? We need his hope so desperately. So let's pray. I'm going to encourage you to stand, and we're going to sing one last song with our team here today. But Father, I thank you, and Jesus, we thank you that you came and that you are the hope of the world. Today, we put our hope in you, we put our trust in you, we put our faith in you, we put our everything in you, we lay it all at your feet. God, we say, move us into something brand new. I thank you for all you've done and for who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen.